do a cold air intake install and also the uh, throttle body mod on this 04 Silverado with the 4.3 Vortec. Um, if you, you any Vortec this will work uh, I mean you can do the similar thing to the V8s as well um, but this specifically is for the 4.3 so this also applies to the S10 and the Astro and Jimmy and on and Blazer and all those with the little 4.3 uh, V6. So if you have like an S10 for example, there's more options. There's very little options uh, for an intake for the Silverado for some reason. I guess because not that many people do anything with them if they unless they have a V8. So there's a few more options if you look around for cold air intakes on uh, the S10s. But for this one, pretty much the only option that I could find. Uh, as far as an affordable option, I think uh, k n makes like, you know, their 300 and some odd dollar thing, but it's not really uh, necessary on something like this. So I got this on eBay. It was about 35, 40 bucks. And they did make a longer one that would replace all of this. Um, but it was about double the price. I think it was like $90. And I'm not doing that because, you know, generally if you replace something like this, which causes uh, air turbulence and whatnot because it's not super smooth on the inside but well, something like that you'll gain more power however in my opinion that's not really gonna work on this because you go straight to this crap which chokes it down and then it's a straight 90 degree angle straight down into the throttle body here so you have more restriction going on here than you do from this thing so i thought it was a waste of money to spend 90 dollars instead of 40 to buy the whole track Plus, this metal is going to have more heat soak than this plastic will. And with that being right over the engine right there, uh, that's definitely going to experience some heat soak. So I believe it's better to do it this way. Save some money and you're getting less uh, heat soak as well. So it's pretty straightforward. And we'll get to the throttle body mod as well that you definitely want to do if you're doing this. Or at least definitely do the throttle body mod. Uh, it's very popular in the community. Uh, like I said, you can do it on the V8s too, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, as far as installing this, it's pretty straightforward. All you do is take your air box off and uh, connect your uh, filter here. So I'm going to get that real quick. All right, so I took out the four bolts on each corner so I could pop this off. And uh, that is situated here around your mass airflow sensor, but under this rubber. Of course, you got to loosen your uh, hose clamp there. I'll probably have to take this off to put that on. So I got this out of the way just to see if there's any bolts in here holding it down. It does not appear to be. You should just have these little plastic clips here. There's one there and there's one there. Uh, you can squeeze them with pliers to compress them and then pop the box off. Uh, we'll take another look once I get it out of here. Now it kind of just popped out for me so you can see what's going on there. That little rubber grommet stayed. Whereas this one just came out with it, but that's what you're dealing with. You just got two of those. It looks like you can push that uh, fin down through there and it'll pop out. But either way, it's just those two clips holding it in. All right, so obviously that's going to go down in there quite a ways. So you need to remove this plate and the filter is going to hang lower. Uh, this is where it's important because you don't want to suck up water, uh, depending on how it's designed and how low it hangs. Your uh, mud flap here is going to protect it. So if you don't have this, if yours has been ripped off or something, then definitely don't put your filter down in there. Um, but we're going to install it as it comes, see what it looks like down in here. And as long as it's safe from uh, the tire fling and water on it and all that, that's probably where we're going to leave it. Uh, but definitely if you're missing any of this material to protect it, uh, don't put it down there. At that point, you can just pop it on here. So... And then do this at your discretion, however you want to do it. Or if you just want to be extra safe, just pop your filter off. And this ring will need to come off and we'll just slip it over the mass airflow. Uh, but like I said, we're going to remove this plate and let it hang down there and see what it looks like first. Alright, so this is your mass airflow sensor, so be extremely careful with this. Don't dent any of this up. Don't touch it with greasy, dirty fingers. There's a sensor in there that's very sensitive. And you don't want to mess it up. Also, if you spray anything in here, same thing. Make sure you don't get any crap in there. 
So there's the ring that attached to the box. Uh, you gotta pry that off of there. Mine stuck a decent amount because the rubber, you know, over time will kind of like weld itself to the metal. So that's what happened. And then you just basically attach this here. So I'm gonna hook this up real quick and uh, see what it looks like. So I think we're good there. I haven't tightened nothing down yet, but that's kind of where it sets. Even though this thing just kind of flops down on its own because of this accordion type crap there. So it, uh, there's the tip of my filter right there. So, you know, I would say if it's raining cats and dogs, don't be like hot running around in the rain or anything, but we should be fine here. So that's where we're going to do it. Like I said, if you're concerned about that, then you can just bring the filter up clamp over it over the uh, mass airflow sensor but we're going to install it like that so and one thing i would definitely recommend which i'm about to do here obviously this one's loose because i'm able to just slip it on and off but i'm going to make sure all these are tight because you don't want your damn air filter to fall off on you while you're going down the road so that's that but uh since we're doing the throttle body mod i'm not going to throw that on here yet because we need to take all this off so um you need to disconnect your mass airflow sensor uh, before you do that you want to disconnect your battery uh, some cars uh, like this Toyota over there uh, the mass airflow sensor is kind of really sensitive and a surge in power can actually fry them so um, we're going to disconnect the battery unplug it and then we're not going to plug this back in until the battery is reconnected other than that looks like it's going to be pretty simple you know just hose clamp here hose clamp there to pop this off so we'll get that far and then pick up from there all right, so I just popped her off there. You got to pop those his hose off. You leave that on there. That's more of one of those permanent bands. It's not screw type. Ow. Unscrew this. It's right down in here. And then it'll pop off. But you got these metal tabs right there. Those black metal tabs hanging down. They hook over top of this. And you just basically got to... It's going the wrong way there. You basically just got to kind of like uh, wiggle and pull up on this real hard while you bend it backwards towards the cabin and it'll pop out like that. Alright, so the throttle plate mod or throttle body mod, whatever you want to call it, it's that thing right here. It's that big, well it's black because it's covered in carbon, but that reduces airflow, so we're going to remove that. So I'm going to take the throttle body off first. Be easier to do that and then pop this linkage out plus i can show you more easily um i think there's just three mounting bolts two here and one here but you have this bracketry and whatnot uh, connected to it here and there so we'll have to disconnect those potentially down here as well and then these uh clips that plug into it so i'm gonna work on getting everything detached so i can get that off Pay attention to which order those go so you don't get them on backwards when you reinstall. So blue is on the back, purple in the front. But let me get this bracket stuff off of here and the mounting bolts out. All right, so I got the uh, this bracketry out of the way like I was talking about. This one's unbolted here. You can see it's wet. Well, it's, it's still bolted down there, but I don't think it's going to keep me from pulling that out. So I unbolted there. I'm on this last one back here. And you can see it's actually that head. Not sure what size yet, a real tiny sucker, so I'm gonna try to find the right wrench for that to back this out or you're gonna need a real tiny socket. And uh, definitely use six point on it, not a 12 point. All right, so I got seven thirty seconds. Now I put a little wrench on there that was the same size and it was uh, pretty loose. I didn't feel comfortable with it. I went and got my sockets and even though this is the same size, it fits much more snugly. So make sure you get something that fits pretty good on there because I don't know how tight that's going to be and if it's going to try to round that or not. So yeah, it was just those three bolts other than taking the bracketry off and the uh, plugs on the side here. So this is upside down here. It'll come off like that. I kind of had to finesse it around this bracket that I left standing a little bit. But then flip it upside down and then you can pull your throttle cable out. It's kind of hard with one hand, but it'll just pop out. Uh, can you push that through? You just push it through like that. All right, so here's your restriction. Can you hold that in place? So as I showed you earlier, that's blocking at least 20% of uh, flow there. So it's kind of pointless to do something like that to try to get more airflow if you're gonna leave that in there blocking airflow. So 
That's why we're removing it. And both of these mods together should be a pretty noticeable increase in power and throttle response. So this is riveted on there. Um, you might think, well, why can't you just drill the rivets out and, and it'll fall off? Well, if you do that, then when you're at idle, when your throttle plate's closed, you're going to be getting too much airflow because you're only supposed to get it through here a little bit in this little tiny hole. So if you drilled out the rivets and just took it off, then you have these extra holes that are now getting more air at idle. So you're going to have an elevated idle, so you don't want to do that. So what you got to do is unbolt it here with those. And I'll show you more once I get it off. Let me open it. And then you have to slide the whole plate out, and then we're going to cut this thing off and then uh, smooth off the edges. Because you can't drill out those rivets or you'll, you'll mess with your idle. All right, so when you gotta remove those, you're gonna need one of these, a little Torx bit or whatever it's called. A little star pattern. Anyways, those are pretty tight. So make sure you get one that fits real nice and snug. And you're also going to press down pretty hard and twist pretty hard to get those to break free. So make sure you press down real hard so it doesn't slip and round the head. Then after that, you gotta open it like this and then it'll slide out. Go ahead and push. There. We're, we'll do the rest off camera, but you can see how it slides out like that. So you got to hold it wide open and then slide it out. So after you slide it out, that's what you got. It's real light aluminum. Even this piece is aluminum, so it won't be too difficult to cut through. Um, so I'm going to leave this little bit there, that little elevated piece of it, so that those rivets will stay in, as I discussed. I'm going to cut this off, but I'm not going to touch this. Okay, there's a lip right there. So I'm just going to cut the face of it off. So there, there'll just be like a millimeter or two left from that plate where those rivets go through. And I'm just going to round the edges with a Dremel or something. All right, so that's what I came up with, guys. You got to be real careful because, again, this is aluminum. So it's very thin. It's very quick to cut through. Also, you want to be careful what you hold it with, which is why I have the C-clamp on here. Because uh, if you try to hold it with channel locks or something, you know, while you're working on it, you might bend it because it's thin aluminum. So, cut it off. I used my uh, cutting wheel on my grinder there for the big piece. Uh, cut it most of the way off what I needed. And then I used the Dremel with the cutting wheel and a grinding wheel to finesse it a little more. And then finally, uh, I finished it up with a little wire brush wheel with my Dremel. Now, the reason I cut these edges off here is what you got to be careful for. Well, it's not this piece, but... Um, when I was coming around, shit, these might be upside down. When I was coming around the edge here, polishing down the edge with my, my little wheel and the Dremel, it caught the edge here and it, it bent it up some. So that's why I cut these off and, uh, just polish that. So be careful you don't catch it like that or you can just cut it off there. So, but just remember you got to leave these rivets in place. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see that's about as good as I got it. You have to be real careful not to hit this edge. Okay. Cause that's where it seals inside your throttle body so if you hit this edge and allow a little air leak through there it's going to mess with your idle so that's really all you got to watch out for but that's what i did um i didn't want to cut this off because you know i don't want to risk that any of these rivets falling off so in the end that's what i got so obviously there's still a very small amount of obstruction there but compared to what it was that is so much better so it's going to help throttle response and airflow a ton so there's what you got instead of previous. Um, if you're so inclined, you could cut a few millimeters off the tip of those screws if you wanted to. We're not going to worry about it because those tips don't have any thread on them. But you could theoretically cut those off if you wanted. Um, when you put those back in here, it's real easy to strip these. So I go backwards with them first until I can feel it click down to feel the threads engage and then I go forward to make sure I didn't strip them out and then make sure you snug them down real good uh, and it's not a bad idea to put a little bit of a uh, thread lock on there if you want all right so we're ready to throw the throttle body back on here obviously before you put this plate back in you should have cleaned all your little metal dust and stuff off of it which we did uh, operated a few times make sure it works smooth like it did before you took it out Clean up your surfaces here. Uh, if you have an excessive amount of junk on here, clean it off with a gasket scraper. Any oil and grease, clean it off with a rag with brake parts cleaner. Uh, up here, just wipe the gunk off of there. Obviously, away from the ports. 
and uh, as long as this gasket's still nice and rubbery and malleable, which ours is, you should be fine to just go ahead and reuse that gasket. Uh, if it's hard or brittle, go ahead and replace it. Or if you want to, you can replace it anyways. But as long as it's soft and, and rubbery like ours, it should be fine. I was going to say, uh, don't forget, plug that back in first. It'd be a lot easier to hook your throttle linkage back up while the uh, throttle body's off. All right, I got it back on there. Uh, your torque spec on your throttle body bolts is 12 foot pounds of torque or 144 inch pounds and then for these other bolts and nuts to put your bracketry back on uh, you just do those a little lighter like eight or nine foot pounds of torque or about 100 112 inch pounds whatever so we got all that back on throttle linkage put on first like i said everything's torqued down so uh now i just need to hook the uh the intake pipe work back up Alright, so then pop that back on again, these little tabs right here. You gotta come at about a 45 degree angle so you can get this tab past there, those little metal tabs. And then once you get those down, then you kinda just rock it down and kinda like pop it on there. And then make sure you put that back on to uh, clamp it back down. So we just gotta hook this pipe work back up, throw the filter on there like I showed a minute ago, and uh, we're done. Besides uh, hooking the battery back up and uh well i guess i never did unplug this but okay here i was discussing how our pipe was rattling on that framework there uh without realizing that apparently uh it the kit included bracketry that would hang it up so that this does not occur so uh i was too stupid to look in the box and find it until after this video was complete <laughs> so the kit did come with a little hanger bracket that would pick this uh, filter up and pipe and keep it from rattling on that so this part right here is completely Not necessary because I just failed to notice the uh, Bracketry that came with the kit So the other thing I noticed is that you could push that pipe clear into it contacts that webbing on your uh, mass airflow sensor, so um, I would advise for one be careful slipping it in so you don't smash that Because as I said your mass airflow sensor is pretty uh, sensitive device um but you also don't want it sitting against it because vibrations it'll start rubbing through it and stuff so i pushed it in lightly till i felt it touch and then i pulled it forward about an inch and then tightened it down so there we go and connect the battery and then fire up